I, according to the dual solution of these fundamental equations, there is a physicist in uh, the Washington State University who works on this dual solution. His name is John Kramer, and he has developed the transactional interpretation of quantum mechanics. Well, uh, if you follow this interpretation, you get that on a side you've, you have causality, on the other side you have retrocausality that comes from the future. Causality, because it is fixed, you have the particle, uh, say, aspect of matter. Instead, because the future is not fixed, it, it, it is a consequence of the choices we will do, is a probability wave. So the dual na nature of matter, particle and wave, is a consequence of the dual nature of causality. On the other side, we have causality. On the other side, retrocausality. So when we get in the experiments what they call the interference pattern of, of the waves, uh, we see the particles that get on the screen, but they produce the interference pattern. Well, the particle is the past. The interference pattern is the future. That, uh, and every thing that happens would be an interaction between past and future. According to this theory, diverging energy, like the light that diverges from a lamp, it, it comes, you have a cause and you have diverging energy. So you have um, uh, this tendency uh, uh, towards uh, inflation, towards uh, diverging. On the other side, the equation says that there must be exactly the opposite, the converging tendency. So we have uh, um, systems which absorb energy. We have gravitational forces, which would be the consequence of the negative solution. And the reality would be a constant interplay of this, say, uh, diverging forces and converging forces that act on the present moment, where diverging forces come from the past and converging forces come from the future. And that would be at the physical level. The physical reality would be a constant interaction of the past and the future. But at the same time, this would happen in ourselves. In a way, we're moving towards, we're moving towards the future because we are in an expanding universe. Uh, a universe which is expanding, uh, the diverging forces uh, uh, say are prevalent, so the negative, uh, the positive solution of of the equation is governing the law laws of physics, and therefore causality precedes effects. In a converging universe, for example, uh, a black hole, uh, um, it would be just the opposite. The uh, retrocausality would prevail. Effects would. Uh, happened before causes, and uh, time would move backwards. Uh, and that would be the reason why when matter gets in a big hole, in, uh, in a, um, it, it, it just disappears because it goes somewhere else in time. And uh, this interaction between past and future uh, would be always experience also within us in the form of thoughts and emotions on a side. And because of this anticipatory property of emotions, in a way we already have uh, the future in ourselves, but not say um, uh, that the future is determined, it's what we are aiming to. Now, there is another thing that I find interesting is that because of this anticipatory property of uh, feelings, it is like if we can uh, explore our future. Um, um, there is a researcher who did um, a study on commuter trains in the United States and he found out that in practically all the trains that had accidents, there was a lower number of people boarding the, those trains. And this uh, reduced number of people, he did the study on a peri period of 10 years, 
uh, was significant both from the quantitative point of view and from very significant from a statistical point of view. And it suggests that people can in a way have a presentiment of their future. If we experience an accident, our emotions, according to the syntropy model, they travel forward in time, but they also travel backwards in time. And we, in our past, can feel that if we go in that direction, uh, something negative is going to happen. And so if we listen to our feelings, we can choose a different direction, a more advantageous direction. Who studied a lot this kind of mechanism, even if he um, didn't dare talk about retrocausality, has been Antonio Damasio, a quite famous neurophysiologist. He found out that people who have a neurological damages that reduce, impair their ability to feel emotions, what he named somatic markers, because he said that we, mainly he was talking about a, a gut feeling. A, 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 when we're not able to perceive these uh, somatic markers, these emotions, we're not able to avoid the risk. And so we don't choose advantageously. Instead, people who are able to feel the somatic markers are able to avoid uh, the, um, uh, the risk and choose in an advantageous way. And when we don't feel emotions, for example, uh, Damasio was uh, found that people with the impairment of the frontal lobe, they have their cognitive functions that uh, they work correctly. They can do all the problem solving, like mathematics, language, everything. But they're not able to decide uh, advantageously for their future. It's like if they are not able to feel their future. And what Damasio was suggesting is that the decision-making process in, uh, in life is mainly based on what emotions tell you. And only, um, uh, and, and the rational part uh, has added up to emotions as a, as a tool, as a device that we can, can use, but it's not the, the key element in the decision-making process. If we don't feel our emotions, we are not able to decide in an advantage, advantageous way. And that means that in a way we we feel, we perceive the future. And uh, the, the strange fact is that this perception, what the experiments show, is that even if heart rate and skin conductance react before stimuli, if you perform a guessing task organized in this way, you find out that the autonomic nervous system knows what is going to happen in the future. But this information doesn't really move up to the brain. And, and so there is this kind of uh, dissonance between, between what the brain tells you, uh, which is based on uh, past calculations, and what the heart tells you that is based on the ability to feel the future. And a good manager, a clever manager, usually gives uh, a lot of importance to what his feelings tell him. For example, we can see what happened with uh, Steve Jobs of the Apple computer. He had a very extremely complicated life. He quit university, uh, immediately went to India, came back uh, with problems of drug addictions. He had difficulties in his family. But all this situation, in a way, allowed him to discover uh, its inner feelings, emotion, the, what the, uh, uh, these anticipatory emotions, and it could have extremely strong visions of the future and uh, which directed him in, the, in his decisions. But at the same time, he had difficulties to harmonize these strong emotional visions with the rational part. He had 
people around him described him as a um, very tem bad-tempered person that it was very difficult to get along with because he had these strong uh, um, perceptions and when he had them that was it and uh, now what we have to do in a way is to learn to harmonize together these polarities because they are both necessary and uh, we have focused too much on the rational side and, and that uh, uh, probably is one of the main causes why entropy has grown so much in our society. And now we see the um, entropy in the form of crisis, uh, economical crisis, and envir environmental crisis, but also personal and in individual crisis. Uh, what we have to learn is to shift our attention from the rational side to the emotional, heart side, but at the same time we don't have to reject the rational side. We need to find an appropriate balance between these two polarity, polarities.